Hi. So when we're talking about, and when you hear the media talking about Islam, terrorism, violence, usually you they use the word fundamentalism or fundamentalist Islam. Now, the interesting thing about the definition of fundamentalism is that it's strict adherence to any set of basic ideas or principles. So what the media is actually saying is that the basic idea of the religion of Islam promotes terrorism, violence, is oppressive, it's primitive, and that is the idea that the media is trying to portray. But I am trying to debunk that idea and tell you that fundamentalism is that fundamentalist Islam is actually the opposite. And the definitions that the media is trying to portray are actually contemporary definitions based on cultures and individuals twisting what they've what they deem necessary for them for their own benefit. So when we go back in time, when Islam was first introduced, what, we, what I call fundamentalist Islam, it was introduced at a time when um, there was high ignorance. It was literally called the days of jahiliya in Arabic, which means ignorance. It was because no respect was given to women. And this, what, this is what brings me to feminism. So last month was Women's History Month, I'm, I'm sure, as most of you know. And feminism was a an, was an, um, belief that came up quite often in conversation. And Islam is rarely ever associated with that word. So again, in the seventh century, this is about 600 CE, that's exactly how it was. There was no respect for women whatsoever. In fact, when daughters were born, they were buried alive because they were thought to bring shame to families. Um, sons were the ones that were given honor, um, etc. So it was very hard times for women to survive in that society. So Islam was revealed, and this was in Mecca, so, which is now in part in Saudi Arabia. And all of a sudden, <coughs> excuse me, all of a sudden, the, uh, they completely changed the idea of what women are supposed to be. So let's start with a few examples. Women, like I said, were buried alive. They had no say in anything whatsoever, maybe political, maybe employment, education. But all of a sudden, Islam allowed women to vote, to partake in political activities, and be important parts of society. And this was 600 CE, right? When did, when did the US do that? We did this in the 1920s, right? So we were about 13 centuries late. Now, if I were to go to another example, ownership of property. In Europe, as some of you might know, if you were to own property, you had to transfer it to your husband once you got married. And then a bill was passed in the 1870s to let women keep ownership of that property. Islam doesn't have anything of that sort. You can keep as much investments or property that a woman might own. <clears throat> and she has no responsibility to transfer it to her husband when she gets married. And again, that was in 600 CE, and we did this in the 1870s. So for this, we were about 12 centuries late. Let's go to income. Now, income is also related to your property, your investment. Because there were equal employment and education opportunities for women now, women were earning money. And now what Islam says about women is that if you, if a woman is to earn, she does not have the duty to invest a single cent in her local household. So she can do whatever she wants with it. She can keep it for, she can save it for something. She could spend it on whatever she wills. But her husband or her parents or her children do not have the right to tell her, no, since you're earning, you should be the breadwinner of the family. In fact, the man is supposed to be responsible to do that. Now, some people may argue, okay, so all of a sudden now we're giving men more, a woman more rights. In a sense, what we're doing here was it was kind of like affirmative action. Previously, women were oppressed. 
And so Islam comes along and goes like, you know what, we're gonna give some certain rights, more certain rights to women and, and you know, value it out with men in some other uh, situation. So if you were to actually do a cost-benefit analysis of the benefits and costs of being a woman or a man in Islam, you'd actually found that we were very equal. And so this is literally what a jar would look like um, because of the lack of income invest like income expenditure in the house by the woman, her jar would probably be much more filled with coins than you know the man's would. Um, another point that I'd like to come to is motherhood. This is my mom. This is me as a baby. I was a bald baby, frilly dress, you know how it was. <laughs> so in motherhood, once a woman gives birth to a child or adopts a kid, automatically her status in Islam is elevated to extreme degrees. One of the examples is that Prophet Muhammad, he was the one who brought Islam to the society, and a man approached him and asked him, who in society respect, uh, deserves my respect and kindness? And so the Prophet replied, your mother. And then he said, who next? And the Prophet replied, your mother. And then the man asked, who next? And the Prophet again replied, your mother. And then the man asked one last time, OK, who next? And then the Prophet replied, your father. So this doesn't mean that you don't respect your father at all, <laughs> of course. What it means is that your mother actually deserves three times more respect than your dad does be just because she had to bear it with you for nine months. And the physical pain that she had to go through and the sacrifices that she had to make. And also the prophet says that once you're a mother, paradise lies under your feet. So with these examples, I just like to say that my, I might have proven to you that yes, maybe that Islam is a feminist religion or I might not have. But if someone were to come to me and tell me, oh, so are you a feminist? I'd probably just be like, no, I'm just a Muslim because I don't need to be a feminist. Now, if I were to give you some more examples of um, famous women in Islamic history, maybe you'd be convinced. So this is Nuseiba bint Kaaba Lansariya. She was actually there at the time of the Prophet. Um, she took part in the battle with, along with the Prophet, something that people will be surprised at because now we're not considered, women aren't like, most Islamic countries do not take part in uh, fighting, but she did. And she was actually one of the key people to protect the Prophet when an enemy was attacking. And she got injured in the process. And she wakes up the next day and she's, um, the one concern that she had was, is the Prophet okay, is he alive? That's what her biggest concern was. This is actually a depiction of her in a recent movie, actually a series on a Middle Eastern channel called NBC. It's not, N, it's not NBC, it's NBC. Um, and it's called, the series is called Omer. So if you would like to check it out. Another example I'd like to give you is of Fatma al-Fihri. She was a Moroccan princess. And she was the first person to open up a formal university that gave out degrees. So the fact that we're all sitting here at UTA, the fact that we're having this TED talk and we're gaining degrees or we're teaching degrees is because of her. And this was the ninth century. So this is not the 1800s, the 1700s. This is 800 CE. So this is just 800 years after Christianity came along. Um, another example, Nana Asmao. She was much recent. She was in the 19th century, so this is 1800s. She was also from the royal family, and she was responsible in her society to gather women and empower them towards education. So these are just a few examples of women doing spectacular things, of, of Muslim women doing spectacular things. So the contemporary fundamentalist definitions of women not being important parts of society in the Islamic, Islamic societies is actually, it's actually very wrong. So if you were to go back to fundamentalist teachings, if you were to go back to the basic principles of Islam, feminism was very much prevalent. And if I request you after this talk, if you have been convinced, if someone comes up to you and says, oh no, Islam is oppressive, it's primitive, it's not made for contemporary times, and it's definitely not feminist, you just be like, 
bro. <laughs> Islam was a hipster in feminism. Thank you.